Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk about the fact that you oftentimes see people, and this is very common actually, uh, and I would go so far as to say it's not only the cause of the problem, but it is probably one of the number one reasons people continue to fail their goals, is that people who do have years of failing to reach their goals, and I do mean years, um, I'm talking about four, five, eight, ten years invested and to some element of fitness who have never once reached any of their goals, like they've reached none of their goals that they've stated, uh, who when actual argument, they will actually argue with people who are experts, like who actually know how to do the things that they do. Maybe they uh, put out information for a living on it, or they coach for a living on it, or they a practitioner of some type of medical practitioner, whether a right, registered dietitian, something else, these people will argue with them. And they're also the people who will say things like, I know what works for me. And I mean, we're talking whether it's weight loss or whether it's uh, strength or muscle goals or whatever. And I mean, perfect examples of things that I can I can think about is I knew someone who, and I still know her actually, who at no point in her life has been that I've known her in the years that I've known her, which is, you know, maybe eight years. She has never been at a healthy body weight. Okay. She claims to be very health conscious. She claims to watch what she eats. And of course, then when I, I see meals that she posts up of, of you know, on social media, it, it will be stuff like bacon wrapped jalapenos it's got dessert on the side with chocolates, there's a glass of wine, so on and so forth. But this is a person who legitimately believes and when, when they a actually talk nutrition, I thought this is someone who actually asked me years ago for some advice and wanted to talk about nutrition because we, we were at a, at a gathering of some type of event. And she goes, hey, you know, I, I want to pick your brain on some stuff. And it was basically, she was just looking for confirmation that what she was doing wrong is right. And she said, well, here's what works for me she's like i try to do kind of high protein moderate carb moderate fat and her idea of that was you know maybe 30 percent of her calories from each you know about a third of her calories each day from each and uh you know she's like and you know i mean i don't super worry about tracking my calories type but i try to keep those ratios close you know i try to eat just a moderate amount of fat and a moderate amount of carbohydrate. But then, you know, you look at what, what she does and it's like, yeah, her fat and carbohydrate is, you know, dessert and bacon and wine. You know, and, and, and I would understand an occasional cheat meal, but this is a person who is still overweight, you know, and this is regular to the meals they'll post. Some people say, well, you know, that one meal's not a snapshot into their life. I'm like, well, when they've been 50 pounds or 60 pounds overweight for the past eight years, or you, I don't think it's just a snapshot into their life. I think this person eats like this all the time. They try to work in some healthy foods. Okay. This is a person who's like, well, yeah, I like to throw salmon in and I eat vegetables and, you know, quinoa and brown rice I, I eat those things every day but then they also eat bacon and chocolate and wine okay you guys see the the problem here we're not talking about someone who's gotten lean allowing themselves an occasional cheat meal there's stuff that they kind of just eat every day at least every time i've seen this person and it would make sense is that they're eating habits since that's what they post up you know, I mean, it's like when I watched the person when we were, were at a thing, you know, she's going to the fridge and everything. And, uh, you know, she was eating some some cold cuts and stuff and some some lunch meat and had a salad. But she was also eating bagels with butter smeared on them. And she was putting butter and stuff on her bagels. Right. But she knows what works for her. She's like, this has always worked really well for me. But she's never not been fat. Seen people who struggled for 10 or more years to reach a goal weight, you know, who, again, I'm talking they're always 30, 40, 50 pounds over their goal weight. 
who, you know, you, they ask you about nutrition and, and increasing their protein. Like, well, it seems really hard to get that much protein. And they're like, well, I've been adding Atkins shakes lately because you said I need more protein and it's like mostly fat. I'm like, well, I think I need a little bit of fat in my diet, you know, some extra meat fat and stuff just to be healthy. But they're not losing weight. And they've just now started strength training. But their strength training is, you know, not very good. You know, like classes-based stuff. Okay, but they're like, but I think I need this. I know I need this. Or, you know, you'll see guys who they, they want a big squat. You know, they squat 365, 370. Hey, they've been training for four or five, six years. And they'll say, well, I know what works for me, you know. And, and it's one thing if you say, I don't give a shit about my squat. Like, that's, that's perfectly acceptable. You know, a healthy young man who says, I just want to train a bit and I don't care that much about my squat. It's not something I care about at all. You know, to squat 365, I suppose, is okay. But if someone actually says they're actively been working on their squat, I'm going to go so far as to say you've been training five years as a healthy young man and you struggle with 405. Okay? You don't actually know what works for you. You don't. You don't know what works for you. Because that's not that good. Now, people say, well, for gym lifts, yeah, but no one at the gym knows what they're doing either. So we come back to the point of if you actually wanted to get a big squat and that's the best you can do after five years, you don't actually know what you are doing. And that's the difference because it's not a question of, well, for a gym lift, that's okay. It's a question of if you actually were training correctly to and eating correctly to get a bigger squat you're behind schedule you're way below the curve so you don't know what you're doing hopefully that makes sense that people understand the difference because you would just have a bigger squat like if you trained correctly and you didn't even care about your squat that much but you trained correctly to have a big squat it would be a lot more than that it shouldn't take you five or six years to get to a 405. It just shouldn't. And again, people will say, wow, that's, that's harsh. It took me longer than that. But here's a question I would ask you. Did you know what you were doing? Probably not. So that's the point here is that when this person says, I know what works for me. Well, you just said you're trying to get your squat up and your squat is still, you know, mediocre. So are you sure it actually works for you? Because I can assure you, I don't train my squat work and squat accessory work any harder than those people do. You guys have seen me squat well over 500 on multiple bars, different barbells in my mid and late 40s at this point. Okay. Do you think I'm training harder than they are? I want you to really think about that. You guys watch my training vlogs. Am I really training harder? No. I'm training a hell of a lot smarter. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And then the point is, these people don't. So they like to say, I know what works for me, but it's like, but, but you don't know what works for you. And if you're going to talk to someone who knows how to do it, don't pretend that you do. Because they're just going to laugh at your stupid ass. All right, guys. But that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I'll talk to you guys next time.